Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. And yesterday, we gave you an update on high school recruiting, where K-State is kind of standing. We give you one of those every week, just devoted to that. Today, though, there's still a lot to be done in the transfer portal for football. I know basketball is the one getting all the attention and probably something that you'll want to monitor through the weekend over at K-State Online. But Football has some needs still, and it's they're not glaring. I think a lot of it is just luxury ads. You want to build some depth. You you just want to be prepared for every circumstance that is out there. And we know that K-State has gotten good news in recent days. Dylan Edwards, Alec Marenko, and not necessarily Transfer Portal, but uh, Malcolm Alcorn Crowder, who was in the class of 2024, a JUCO transfer from Butler, Seemed like he wasn't going to make it, and then all of a sudden back in the fold and says, hey, I'm coming, which is a big nab for K-State because he was a top-five Juco player, according to On3, has his four stars, so there's good stuff there. But, Drew, you say that it seems like K-State is still in pursuit of a, d- a defensive tackle that we talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago from Kennesaw State. Yeah, I believe that uh, his visit will take place uh, next weekend as we're recording this on Friday. But it's uh, Carlos Al- Allen out of Kennesaw State. Uh, his top schools are Houston. I believe uh, Vanderbilt is also in the mix. K-State's in the mix. And then I believe it's Cal. So I, I think that it, it's it's a luxury ad for K-State at this point with already having Malcolm Alcorn Crowder back in the fold. But I think it's something that you really need to pursue because the how much will Alcorn Crowder play defensive tackle compared to defensive end is kind of up in the air at, at the moment. And I think that you would just feel better about the defensive tackle position if Carlos Allen comes in and immediately fills in D tackle two, D tackle three. Because they, they just need a bigger body because it, it's another position where they just don't have a lot of numbers scholarship wise and you would like to add somebody to add to that room because Alcorn Crowder is not necessarily a small guy but he's a little bit on the lighter side so you'd probably want another true defensive tackle that doesn't necessarily have to play defensive end because I think what you'll see is Alcorn Crowder will split time and might even be like a pass rush specialist at D tackle when he comes in so getting Carlos Allen to come in and be like a nose, a true nose, or just be a run stuffer uh, to go along with Uso Sayamalo. I think that's probably what K State wants to do. Yeah, and we saw last year. I mean, K State they they tried with Javon Banks, but he's not at K State anymore because he he couldn't he didn't fit the size requirements to play defensive tackle. Like, and that, there's just nothing you can do about it. Some guys can't put on the weight that they need for that spot, so he has to be a defensive end. And defensive end is a loaded spot right now for K-State. They have a lot of options there, and he just wasn't going to cut it. And you think with the the position of tackle, it's a really easy spot to get banged up considering what you're having to do. You're basically just in there to get in the way of a guy running, and so you've got the running back, offensive lineman, your fellow defensive lineman with you. Like, there's a lot that can happen. And, I mean, think of how many times we've seen Uso Sayamalo in just two years now end up nicked up and have to miss some time here or there. You need the bodies, and Allen gives you that opportunity. So certainly seems like something that K-State is uh, still looking to add. I don't don't think it's detrimental if they can't get an ad here, but this is one of those where if the roster strength is at, you know, 95% right now, you want to try and get it to 100% if you're that close and K-State feels like they're that close. Oh, I, I would 100% agree with that. I felt like linebacker, and especially like Mike linebacker, was a much bigger need coming into the spring transfer portal window than defensive tackle. Defensive tackle feels like one of those where it's just like, eh, like if we can add one, awesome. If we can't, like it's not as big of a deal, especially now with Alcorn Crowder. Uh, but like you said, like defensive tackle, I think is one of the m- more underrated positions in the three, three, five, because you don't really do anything like sexy or flashy. I mean, most of Eli Huggins, career, and this is no fault to Eli Huggins. Cause this is just what he did. And he was so good at it. It's just taking up two linemen and, and just being a run stuffer in that sense. And you're freeing up every other guy. So you're probably the most unselfish player in the entire defense is defensive tackle. All right, well, let's go to another spot that would be 
Kind of a luxury ad for K-State. Not something that you absolutely have to have to be a winner in 2024, but something that you feel like you'd be a little bit more comfortable if you got. And that's a backup quarterback for Avery Johnson because K-State right now behind him, it's a load of inexperience. Jacob Knuth has not played. Uh, Kellen Samonsik has played at the Division II level, but he's also coming off of an injury at Washburn. And then Blake Barnett is a true freshman that is coming in. And K-State, go, it's been since 2019 that they have played one quarterback the entirety of the season due to just how they chose to roll with things. Now, last year, it really wasn't an injury thing, but we did see, you know, Avery Johnson played in lieu of Will Howard. So you can count last year as a healthy season, I guess, if you want. But in parts of every season since 2020, K-State has had to go to a backup quarterback at different times. And with the running that Avery Johnson might do, it stands to reason that at some point he might have to miss a snap or two or something goes on because that's just how football works. And K-State would probably like an experienced quarterback. So is the search still going on there? And where do you think things might land with that? And how tough is it for K-State to get a backup quarterback? Because you know you're not coming to K-State with any chance of starting a football game the next two seasons. The search is still on, but like you said, I think it's a little bit of a tougher sell because it's just, so hard especially for a guy in the transfer portal because you probably want a guy that has experience playing to come in and be the backup so i'm interested to see how k-state navigates this I, I, it was never publicly acknowledged but timmy mclean from ucf was somebody that k-state was really going after until he committed to arkansas state so it, it's just a tough sell I, I wouldn't be surprised if a backup quarterback shows up on k-state's radar and visits within the next week or so and potentially even commits to k-state i i just it, it's a tough sell right now because it, could, could you imagine telling somebody that had started like two three seasons hey you can come in here but like you're gonna be the backup like we already have our starter so i, I wonder if it's it'll be somebody from like the group of five level even to the point where i i've started to look at like what does like an FCS quarterback or like a division two quarterback, what, what does that look like to come in and be the backup? Because it's just, it's a really delicate spot too, because you don't want everybody else on the roster to be mad. And the quarterback room is just so inexperienced that I think that you would want an older guy to come in. Well, and guys want to play like Timmy McClain would have been awesome. And, I can, I can about bet that Timmy McLean would rather be playing power four football this coming season than you know going to the Sun Belt. But at the end of the day, there's a good chance Timmy McLean isn't really playing power four football next season if he had come to K State because Avery Johnson is playing. Timmy McLean is sitting on the bench in power four football, something that he just did last season at UCF. And like I, you can't fault a guy for wanting to go play at a level lower than a guy that says, yeah, I'll just sit here and, and duke it out uh, and, and wait my time. So it makes sense that K-State would look. It just might be tough for them to get the the right type of person that is looking for that opportunity. Uh, I, I Really, I think you'd have to find somebody that's very realistic about the circumstances, and they'd have to you know, weigh a little bit more heavily. Hey, having the slim chance that I get to play at Kansas State is better than the great chance that I'm starting at you know, some Mountain West or Sun Belt school or lower than that. Uh, I'll come in with probably one of the hottest takes that I've brought on the show in a while that I think that if Kasich can bring in a quarterback that has starting experience, either from the G5 or the FCS level to be the backup quarterback, I think that that would be the most impressive ad of the entire offseason. Because you're yeah. bringing you're bringing in a starter from another school to be the backup quarterback, and they're okay with it. It's definitely a a tougher fight than any of the other ones, you know. Uh, talent wise, obviously the Edwards and Marenko ads were big, but if you can find somebody that wants that role, uh, good job. Uh, one other spot that is probably a luxury ad for K State, or just one that you want to fill out depth and not leave any stones unturned is offensive line help. Where where do you think K-State stands on trying to add to this offensive line, which guys have been in and out, dudes have been in the program for a while, but overall a lot of inexperience playing meaningful reps at this level. 
I think that a tackle makes a lot of sense for K-State uh, because of I, I think that there's kind of a, a move to potentially get Easton Kilty to play guard at one of the spots. And Andrew Chambly has already came into Manhattan and visited. I, I just don't know how his recruitment will play out because I, that feels just like the longer that it goes, the probably you feel worse about it for K-State. Uh, uh, and a, a name that popped into the portal that makes a lot of sense actually for K-State because they recruited him out of high school is Ethan Boyd uh, from Michigan State. So I wonder if K-State tries to kick the tires there again. Uh, but I, I think that it's another, like you said, just a luxury ad more than anything because you want guys or you want to get your best five out there. And if your best five is Easton Kilty at guard with a transfer tackle in, awesome. If your best five is killed hit tackle with one of your other guys that you had a guard already in, even better. Like, yeah, I, I think that there's just a chance that you see K State try to just find a true tackle, but I, I don't think that it's like a huge pressing need. So, like, like you said, it's, it's a major, major luxury ad, I think. And if they can do it, it would also be one of the more impressive things because. It's uh, again where your, your spot isn't necessarily guaranteed because I think that K State has a lot of good depth along the offensive line anyway. Yeah, we'll see how it goes for K State, but probably in another spot that they're looking at. Anything else from the transfer portal that you could even see K State doing, or would anything outside of defensive tackle, quarterback, and offensive line be a surprise to you? I think that another linebacker makes sense, not necessarily at, at the Mike position like Alec Marenko, which is where. Like people will say, like, why not Elijah Herring too? Well, I think it's because that they don't want another Mike. And I think that they're okay with Austin Romain and Bo Palmer being the backup Mikes. But the backups between the Will and the Sam kind of up in the air, especially again, because this is where Jake Clifton going on the, the mission really hurts K State again, because they're a little bit more unproven at the Sam and the Will backup spots, because not only was Clifton going to start at the mic, but he was probably going to be the first one at Sam or Will if Desmond Purnell or Austin Moore went down. So I, I think that you'll probably see them pursue another Sam or Will, probably somebody that can play either spot. And again, not like a huge need, but it's just nice luxury. And, and especially now that the transfer portal window has came and gone for K-State football. I think that you're you're going to see a little bit more excitement about be, about where K State sits because the roster is set now, and K State lost two players total in the entire transfer portal window for this football cycle. And one was the walk on Max Marsh, and the other one, like you said, was Javon Banks, who was a D tackle, but then moved to D end because he couldn't keep the weight to play defensive tackle. And then when he got to defensive end, there was a lot of young guys in front of him. So that I mean that that's just an understandable one. And with Max Marsh, it was he, he was a quarterback, and then he was a safety, and then he was a quarterback, and then he was a safety, and then he was a quarterback. So I, I think that that's also understandable for him. Uh, but I mean, the roster is set, and K State looks to have one of the best teams in the Big Twelve, and could potentially be top twelve when the preseason poll comes out. And I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, K State's got a lot going for him right now, and and I. I said 95% earlier on in terms of roster completion to like a level of where, hey, you're, you're going to compete. Where would you put that number at? Like roster strength in terms of a team that's going to go out and compete to win the Big 12 this coming year? I would say that's probably about 98%. Like it, it would, it, and the only real hesitations that I have, it's not even at the linebacker spot with the backup. So it's probably. I'd feel about 99% with another experienced defensive tackle. And then you get a quarterback on top of that that has experience to be the backup. And I'm at 100%. So uh, I'm pretty confident in K State's Big 12 chances. I know that the sports books are as well. K State's still the betting favorite. And I, I just think that this could be a very, very special year for K State because it looks like they have all the pieces. And the most depth, I think, at every position than K State's had, and I would even say, even over 2022 a little bit. Yeah, there. The, I mean, 2022 it was getting to the stage of 
you were wondering at certain positions, like where are you going to grab from? I mean, <laughs> Keenan Garber was playing meaningful snaps in the Big 12 title game, and he hadn't made it to that position until the middle of the season. So, uh, yeah, K-State seems to be in a lot better of a spot. And we've said all along with this team that it's not that they're lacking guys that can get the job done. It's just the inexperience, and you don't know who in that pool is going to take this job at corner or take this job at linebacker or on the offensive line. I think the talent for the most part is on the roster. It's just about filling in behind them and who is that guy that's going to get selected. And when, you, when you're asking that question, it always helps to have more available options there. Yeah, I think it's all about maximizing K-State's ceiling. And I, I talked about that with uh, when it came out of Dylan Edwards with uh, Devon Booth or, or Devin Booth as well, uh, that I, I just felt like Dylan Edwards probably maximized k State ceiling right now with Avery Johnson. Uh, other than Booth, because Booth was just a one-year guy and Edwards is potentially a three-year guy. So I, I think that that's something that I, I, you're seeing K-State really trying to do is get the best possible roster to win the Big 12 this year and potentially even run it back the next year. All right. Well, that sounds good. We'll see how it goes for K-State in their quest to just kind of add to this really good team already and if the portal provides them the depth and uh, added bonus of a couple of players that they seem to be looking for. For Drew Galloway, I am Mason Voth. Head over to kstateonline.com, add on three. You can find tons of stuff on K-State football recruiting, but also basketball still trying to fill out a roster. Might they have a big weekend there? We shall see. And uh, everything else in between covering the Cats as we go through this offseason, and we sit at just under four months to go until the season kicks off for K-State football against UT Martin. So we are out of here. We will be back again on Monday with a full show. If news breaks over the weekend, you can find it over at KSO or right here on the YouTube page as well.